I have always been interested in how things move. I mean, when we're little, what do we do? We watch bugs move around, right? We watch worms move around. How do snakes move? And why is that so different from how things that have tons of legs move? Then you get smaller and smaller and you realize that bacteria move in totally different ways than these bigger animals that we're used to. So when we move, we're used to thinking about our inertial forces. So if I, you know, if I push somebody on a skateboard, they keep rolling even after I stop pushing them. But what a bacteria feels and the environment that they're involved in is like if I put a human being in a tub of really thick molasses. Because the viscous forces around them are so much stronger than their inertial forces because they're so, so, so small and so, so, so light that what the second, the like moment I stop pushing a bacteria, the moment it stops applying a force, it doesn't move anymore. There's no more directed motion. So each flagella at the base has a rotary motor attached to it, and it's attached via a spring-like connection called the hook, and then the hook is attached to a series of rings. So imagine if like I'm walking around a merry-go-round and I'm like kicking off and rotating the merry-go-round because I'm holding on to something that's solid. This torque speed curve, this, this two regime torque speed curve that's been, you know, kind of the hallmark of the BFM and it's been the most famous result that's come out of, it's been one of the most famous thing that everybody thinks about when they think about the flagellar motor. And a, a, we're really convinced that it's actually not due to the intrinsic mechanics of the motor itself, which I think is really interesting that it's actually due to these experiments not being able to explicitly measure the number of torque generating units that are engaged at any given time. If it's the number of torque generating units that are that it's creating this very unique characteristic that the flagella motor has with respect to other motors, what's causing this recruitment? So I just think it's really interesting that these different ranges of scales of motility and these different ranges of scales of mechanics and how different the physics can be when you start looking at things that are really, really small.